When it comes to food variety for uh, muscle gain, again, use a food diary to assess your client's habitual food intake and food variety. We need to encourage some level of flexibility, but bear in mind the, the, the bulking mentality of just going and eating all of the foods because because um, you're bulking and you, you need all of the calories to, to bulk. No, we need a, a certain number of calories. We want to increase the palatability of our foods to, to some extent, um, but we don't want to go crazy with it. So we, you know, we need to, to maybe put some limit on exactly um, how many different types of foods that we are, we're eating. Again, we want to vary protein sources. Potentially, if your client is, is willing to do that, variety of colorful, colorful fruits and vegetables, um, balance of fat sources, but maybe prioritize monounsaturated and polyunsaturated fatty acids just for the, um, the health benefits and the potential muscle gain benefits as well. And then again, balance of carbohydrate sources, um, the, you know, just the, the standard stuff that we covered in, in fat loss as well. When it comes to meal frequency, um, satiety is going to be very, very individual dependent on, on this one when it comes to, to muscle gain. We know that protein um, synthesis does need to be to stimulated regularly. Um, so anywhere from, from th three to six meals is likely to be quote unquote optimal, which means kind of roughly every three to six hours having a, a mixed meal. I've said here that intermittent fasting, and by here I'm, I mean intermittent fasting in terms of the sub 24 hour fast. So the classic kind of lean gain style intermittent fasting where you fast for 16 hours and then have an eight hour feeding window. I said this is likely, likely to be detrimental. This is just on a, a purely mechanistic um, level when it comes to looking at stimulating muscle protein synthesis. Um, the argument for this one goes that by restricting our feeding window, we're also restricting our opportunities to stimulate muscle protein synthesis. As to how much difference in real world terms this makes, I'm really not entirely sure at all. Um, on a mechanistic level, it's likely to be detrimental. However, we always have to trade that off um, with what is convenient uh, and what is well adhered to by the client. And honestly, if somebody is looking to, to gain muscle, but their lifestyle and their personal preferences mean that they like intermittent fasting, they like skipping breakfast and having more food later on in the day, it's probably not going to make a huge amount of, of difference, certainly in the short term. In the, lo in the long run, it may make a couple of percentage points difference, but it's likely not going to be hugely visible. Um, this argument tends to be made by those who are looking to absolutely maximize the amount of muscle that, that they are carrying um, at the expense of everything else. So again, we always need to trade all of what is quote unquote optimal off with what our clients can adhere to, what they can sustain, what they enjoy doing. Snacking may well be, be beneficial um, when you are bulking or when you are looking to, to gain muscle, just in terms of getting some extra calories in. Um, and as always, use a food diary to, to assess all of this. A food diary is an immensely useful tool when it comes to you and your clients and their habits. Um, we want to make small changes um, based on what our client is habitually doing. Um, and it's probably a good idea to evenly spread calorie and protein intake out over the course of the day.